I've always been an anxious person. I remember being in kindergarten and getting homesick at school and wanting my mom to come pick me up. I remember worrying that I was going to throw up in a public place and so I'd bring a bucket everywhere I went. Um, I remember just always being worried that something was going to happen. And that really kind of was a, a theme throughout my childhood and into my adolescence and into my high school years and into my college years. But it wasn't until I turned 24 that I started taking medicine for my anxiety and depression. I was diagnosed in 2015 with generalized anxiety disorder, um, which always includes some depressive episodes along the way. So mental health is nothing new to me. I have always been aware of it. I think it wasn't until I was a senior in high school that I really started to take responsibility for what that meant and what my life was going to look like. My anxiety definitely peaked in 2015 when I started seeing a therapist my senior year of high school. Um, and for a while that was all I needed. I really enjoyed CBT. I've had a number of fantastic therapists throughout the years. But like the rest of us, 2020 did a number to me. Um, and I officially started taking 75 milligrams of Effexor XR in May of 2020. And looking back, I think that for that moment in time, it was definitely what I needed. Um, at that point, it felt like my physical symptoms were out of control and there was nothing a coping mechanism was going to do. But uh, winter came that year and I kind of just got stuck. And being down and out is not something that I really do well with. It was really frustrating to feel like I didn't have any energy. Um, the sun would go down and I would go down with it, which meant by like five o'clock I wanted to be in bed. Um, I didn't have energy to run around with my dogs. I didn't have energy to go hang out with family and friends. I really just was feeling very stuck. And um, I was still seeing a therapist at the time and we both had kind of just chalked it up to, you know, this too shall pass. It's just another depressive episode. and. Um, doing the right things like working out, drinking water, um, doing something I enjoy would, would pull me out of it. Um, but I just physically could not, like I didn't, I didn't have the energy to do any of those things and the thought of doing those things just made me even more anxious because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get myself up to do them. So at that point, me and my therapist had kind of decided, you know, why don't you go see a psychiatrist just to make sure that, you know, your medicine dosage is correct. Um, and to make sure that we don't need to do any tweaks there because that could be the problem. I've been on medicine since May of 2020 and this appointment would have been in June of 2022. So we were going on two years of medicine and at this point I just wasn't really interested in taking it anymore. And so my hope was that my psychiatrist would help me come up with a plan to get off my medication. At that point, um, the psychiatrist that I had seen had decided that it would make more sense for me to up my dosage of Effexor rather than take me off of it because if I was experiencing this depressive episode then why would we take me off my antidepressants why don't we just increase them um, and that it wasn't a good time to stop taking something that should be helping me when I'm already feeling this low which was not the treatment plan I desired but I wasn't going to argue with my doctor um, and she wasn't wrong it made sense to me as well but I did definitely leave that appointment feeling pretty defeated um, I really wanted to be off my medication at that point, and so I started looking at other options. This is what led me to start seeing a direct primary care doctor um, in Blair, Nebraska at the Healthy Human. Um, back in June, shortly after the appointment with my psychiatrist, I got an appointment with Dr. B there, and we just had a telehealth call where I told her I was what I was experiencing. Um, I talked about the exhaustion, the low mood, my lack of interest in things I usually enjoyed. Um, and she asked if I had ever had an entire, you know, blood work panel done. And I said no, that the doctors had taken my blood at like physicals and stuff, but nobody had ever used it to treat any sort of mental health. That's where we started. We just looked at a picture of my entire body. My first lab results came in back in August of 2022 which showed a lack of vitamin D, uh, not enough progesterone. Uh, my testosterone levels were too high. I had low iron and low vitamin B. And slowly but surely, we started treating all these deficiencies. And it felt like I finally had a secret weapon. 
So while I was still taking my antidepressants, I started on a women's multivitamin of chaseberry and licorice root and a probiotic because if you didn't know at this point, your gut health 100% affects everything that's going on inside your body. And so after we had kind of done a check-in of how things were going, um, and I had said what I had said about my low mood, I will never forget her sitting across from me and looking at me with this confused look on her eyes saying, so if you're still feeling depressed, what exactly are your antidepressants doing for you then? And that was kind of the moment that I knew it was time to get off my medication because it wasn't working. I had been taking medicine since 2020 um, and upped my dose. I'd been on an upped dosage from 75 to 150 to 225 milligrams of Effexor XR over those two years. And I clearly wasn't seeing any benefit. I, I still was experiencing the symptoms of what I thought was depression. So that is how we came up with a plan to get off my medication. So this is everything that I'm taking right now. Um, these two, these two are both my Effexor from my psychiatrist. And these two are my probiotic and my Chase Berry from Healthy Human. And then once a week leading up to getting off my medication, I am taking 50,000 IUs of vitamin D3. So um, it feels funny making this video because it looks like I'm anti-medication or like I don't believe medicine works. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I'm making this video because I really want to normalize taking medication. Um, I think that it's something we don't talk about enough to really give people the help that they need. And on top of that, it's something we talk so little about that there's little information out there available to the other options that you can do besides taking medicine. So I'm not, if you take medicine, way to go. If you don't take medicine, way to go. That's not what this video is about. I just really feel um, like it needs to be more normalized. I do think that deep down a part of me feels like I'm going to have to take medicine forever. Um, I do truly believe that maybe my brain genetically, bio biologically, doesn't have the chemicals it needs to stay, to stay happy and to stay upbeat. And if that's the case, and we go through all this and I can't get off my medicine, then we'll try a different sort of pharmaceutical. But for me, the beginning of this whole mental health process has always been about a long-term health and wellness. Um, and eventually, Effexor only goes up to, I think, 300 milligrams of dosing. And so once you dose out or once you become resistant to the medication, then you have to start all over from scratch. So I'm only one prescription away from the medicine not being potent enough. So there's a lot of reasons for me why I think now is the time to really try to get off of it. I also just really struggle with the daily habit of doing it. Um, it's a lot to remember. And if I don't take it before the time that I usually take it, I start to feel really sick and my head gets really spinny and my tongue like feels weird and I get hot and I usually end up having to come home, take the medicine late, and then I have to go take a nap because my whole brain chemistry feels like it just needed to be restarted because we just added in the chemicals it was missing. So it's really not conducive for the kind of lifestyle I live where I'm running around like a crazy person. And that's one of the main reasons I want to get off of it. I don't like how I feel when I'm not on it. And to me, I think that my body would feel better balanced than it would missing a medicine every day. And these, and antidepressants in general are just not something to mess around with. Uh, back in 2020, when I first started taking medication, I had a really bad reaction to Lexapro. Um, in fact, I, it was the first and only time I've ever had suicidal thoughts. And that was really scary for me. And I think that people don't talk enough about um, how potent these things are and how it's not just a game of messing around with trying different things. Um, and that's kind of what the whole video, the rest of this video is going to talk about is how I have to, I'm going to have to wean myself off of this. And even in the process, the process of decreasing my prescription, there's still going to be withdrawal side effects. And so I'm really, really anxious about that because my Lexapro experience was so bad. Uh, in fact, I probably should have went to the emergency room the night that I was experiencing those things because I had hot sweats and cold sweats and panic attacks and I was throwing up and 
I was shaking and I truly didn't sleep the whole night. So as much as I'm excited to get off of this kind of medication, I'm also really scared because I would hate for something like that to happen to me. But if that's happened to you, I'm really sorry. It is one of the worst feelings in the world and I felt completely out of control for the first time in my life. So, um, so yeah, I think there's a ton of good and a ton of bad that can come from medication, which is why it's so important to have a team of people around you who can help you navigate how to change prescriptions and how to change doses. Um, but I literally would have nowhere to go and nothing to do if Dr. B and my psychiatrist weren't walking me through um, how to get off this medicine. So yeah. So the next time you see me, I am hopefully going to be down um, a bottle of these. I'm really excited. I have to carry these around in my purse everywhere. I've taken them in public all the time, um, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's just one extra thing I have to do every day. And for me, that's been the biggest kicker. Like I just hate remembering to take it. I hate needing to take it at the same time every day because my schedule is always so crazy. And so yeah, I'm excited to uh, be down one of these starting next week. So that's about how long my vitamin B infusion takes. I wasn't in there for any longer than five minutes. Um, but I was just gonna jump on here really quick to talk about why I do those and why I take the vitamin D right now. So um, vitamin B is actually super essential in creating the hormone serotonin. And there's a ton of research out there from the Mayo Clinic um, and a lot of other medical journals that support that vitamin B12 might help make serotonin, which is what you're lacking when you're feeling depressed. Um, or it also might be the vitamin or mineral that transports the serotonin throughout your body. So obviously the importance of having that is without serotonin or without something to carry serotonin throughout your body, you're obviously going to feel sad a lot more of the time. And then same thing with vitamin D. Vitamin D has a lot to do with all those hormones as well as creating happy hormones, moving the happy hormones throughout your body. And so our kind of theory with treating my depression with uh, vitamins instead of antidepressants has been that vitamin D and vitamin B and iron are all very, very important to your overall mental health and uh, overall important to moving those happy hormones throughout your body. So we are pumping me full of vitamin B12, uh, vitamin D, and then I have one more week, two more weeks, one or two more weeks of the vitamin D 5000 I use. Um, that was my last B12 injection until my iron infusion, which I'm really excited for, a little bit nervous for. I don't love needles. I don't love sitting in the doctor's office for that long. But, but yeah, so that's kind of been the theory is that this influx of vitamin B and D12 um, is really going to help explain my low mood, my low energy, my fatigue, my disinterest, because um, if you don't have those vitamins and minerals, then you're not going to feel happy. Um, but more than that, I also wanted to talk about how a lot of people get these vitamins and minerals just in general. They all come, vitamin B and D and obviously iron because iron's what's in your blood. Uh, comes from red meat or animal products and just just naturally I'm I could be a vegan or a vegetarian if I wanted to I just don't really care for animal products I don't love meat I don't crave meat and so that's kind of been super interesting to me is that something I don't naturally get a ton of and so of course I'd be lacking in those vitamins and nutrients when I'm not eating things like meat and eggs and protein uh, so if you want to try maybe introducing some more protein in your diet to make sure you're getting an influx of B12, D, and iron, you certainly can do that. Otherwise, just take the over-the-counter. But, but yeah, just kind of wanted to give you a background on what that vitamin B12, D, and iron are doing for me and what we're thinking they're doing for me. And we will be back here in a couple weeks for my iron infusion. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it would be very like me, like me to write down an appointment as um, on the phone when it's in office. <laughs> withdrawal symptoms nothing like suicidal or scary like that but um mm -hmm. it is what, what was the main withdrawal stuff you were getting um shakes oh. yeah shakes and um I'm just like super tender emotionally which is kind of nice because I definitely have been feeling like I haven't been able to feel that way for a long time I'm having 
pretty intense muscle spasms in my core and I'm just sweating like so sweaty all the time because I'm just trying to get all that I'm sure my body's just trying to get rid of all those yes yeah but honestly I'm okay with that because I'm on day let's see I stopped taking it Sunday um, I'm on day four and I definitely have seen like little improvements throughout the day. So the worst of it is over. The worst day was definitely Monday, which was my second day without anything. Um, so, so it's, it's definitely gotten better, but it was for sure a pretty intense experience. But considering my reaction with Lexapro, um, and that not, that being a pretty intense experience either, I was, I was not caught off guard. I, I figured it was going to be tough. Um, and like I said, I feel like I'm out of the woods as far as intensity goes. Um, and I, my, like my nausea has gone down a little bit every day. I'm not having the muscle spasms. It's been, um, it's been a pretty intense experience, but I've had really good support and I've been really intentional about drinking water and eating good foods and getting enough sleep. So, um, so yeah, so far it was definitely the right move. I knew it was going to be tough. Um, but I, there was really no way to get out but through and that was just kind of it was more of a mind over matter for me this time which which was good okay so <clears throat> so it is iron infusion morning um, I'm gonna be here at the healthy human for a couple hours doing an IV line of iron um, I've talked about it before but it's just because my iron levels have been so low no matter what we've done to kind of help increase those levels um, and low iron would explain why I feel so tired all the time and there's no amount of sleep or rest or water or caffeine that really can touch the kind of fatigue that it has. So I'm really excited. Uh, Dr. B said that after about 72 hours, you feel the effects and that's going to come in perfectly because this has been the longest week ever and it's not slowing down anytime soon. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get in there and get hooked up to my line. I got my laptop. I got my coffee. Should be a good day. I am now almost two months off my medicine and if I'm being completely honest with you guys it has been pretty difficult trying to figure out how to wrap up this video just because I wish I had some big conclusive all answering ending but the truth is with mental health it never ends it's just uh, you go in seasons and it's a daily battle I wish I had a better ending for you guys I wish I had some all conclusive answer that told you about how I got off my medicine and everything was better and everything was good, which it is. It's definitely been a major improvement since March um, and even since January. Uh, it's been a pretty positive change in my opinion. Anyone who struggles with mental health is going to tell you that it's you take it day by day, season by season, and I've been in a pretty good season for the past few months. Um, I think getting off my medicine was definitely the right move for me. I have noticed several improvements. In my opinion, I definitely feel a lot more happy, if that makes sense. It felt like on my medicine that every single feeling hit this ceiling. And on my medicine, there was really nowhere to go with those feelings. Not that it numbed me out. I don't want to say that it numbed me out because I think that's a really negative stigma that prevents people from getting on medication is because they feel like they're not going to feel anything. And I would say that that was maybe true at the end when I really started to notice that something was off, that I wasn't feeling anything. But at the beginning when my dosage was correct and it was working, I didn't feel that way. Um, but at the end, I definitely felt like I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't feel sadness. I couldn't feel extreme amounts of joy. I couldn't feel, I couldn't feel anything, which if, for me, that was just so strange to not be able to feel any sort of emotion other than just I don't want to say complacent, I don't know. It's really hard to explain, but everybody that I've talked to that has been on medication and tried to get off medication, I think would say the same thing, that you just, 
you just it's just this visual of your feelings not being able to um, fully come to fruition I guess not being able to process them not being able to get them out with all that being said I just feel better I feel more like myself I feel lighter um, I definitely cry a lot more I didn't realize how much I was not crying while I was on my medicine and sometimes that's a good thing sometimes that's a bad thing but um, I also feel like I'm more open to feeling things like I truly at the end of it I didn't want to watch any sort of a movie that would make me feel any type of way because I couldn't feel it and so it's been fun to rediscover passion for things like reading and making these videos and uh, wedding seasons coming up and I'm really excited about them last summer I just remember being very apathetic I just remember not wanting not really being there but not really wanting to care about being there like I was just there and this summer I go into everything with a lot more intention and a lot more excitability and a lot more joy and so that's definitely been the biggest improvement is I feel like I feel things again and I didn't even know I was missing that until I mean until I got off the medicine right like there's no way to know what you don't know and so I've been super thankful for that I do think getting off the medicine was the right move for me I don't know if it's the right move for everybody I think that medicine has its time and place and statistically ages 21 to 26 I think are the most highly prescribed ages right like that's when the most people feel like they need to go on medicine so maybe there's something going on in our brains during this age rate during this age range where we need some extra help we need some I don't know I wish I like I said I wish I had all the answers for you guys but I really don't there's really nothing to end this video other than you've got to be ready to listen to your body um, you have to be willing to listen to what your brain is telling you versus what your body's telling you versus what your heart's telling you it was definitely as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, I do regret not filming a lot of the harder moments where I was shaking and kind of unconsolable when I was getting off my medicine, but I also didn't want to exploit any sort of emotion thing going on. So, um, But I do wish I had filmed a little bit more about how intense it was getting off my antidepressants, but I was also going through it, and so the thought of pulling a camera out, I was like, absolutely not. But it was definitely as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, prepare yourself for that if you're thinking about getting off medicine uh, but I will say it got 5% better every day every day there was small small improvements from the day prior like I'd be a little less shaky um, I'd be a little less emotional I'd be a little less this and so it's just a slow go of it you have to give yourself time and grace and patience and know that and know that it's gonna get better but it has to get worse before it gets better and so I'm really proud of myself honestly uh, I didn't think I could do it I didn't know how I was ever gonna do it but it's super cool to be sitting here in May almost two months later and see the progress that I've made and so that's kind of the gist of this video I want you guys to know that it is okay to need medicine it's okay to not need medicine but the thing that got me through the most of it was God's faithfulness God's provision and all my friends and family the support system I had throughout you have to be willing to be vulnerable with people and let them in so that they know what's going on. Um, that way when things are really tough, uh, like example, if, things, if it was a really tough day, my husband wasn't blindsided when I came home just a basket case. I let my coworkers know because I was going to be a little bit more emotional. Um, I was maybe going to be a little bit more sensitive. And so for me, what really helped me was being vulnerable throughout the whole process. And that's why I wanted to document it because when you go online and you look for how do I get off my antidepressants, all you see is these terrifying articles of how difficult it's going to be, how painful it's going to be, how scary it's going to be, how you probably can't do it without a doctor. And that's true. You need to have all of the information. But what did the most for me was being willing to be super vulnerable and being willing to let people in as to what was going on. So that way they could help me. They could understand where I was coming from. They could know where I'm at. Um, and so I definitely couldn't have done it without all of those things and I just I'm really glad that I did what I did and I don't know what's next I can't tell you that I've had a hundred good days in a row um, in fact this week has probably been one of the harder ones but it's just knowing that I'm back in control of my emotions and knowing that I have a support system there who's been with me since I was 17 way back in 2015 and it's the same support support system I have today so what I wish my younger self would knew, would know is that for, there's a season for everything. 
There was a season for me to be just in therapy. There was a season for me to be just in the word daily. There was a season for me to be on medicine and doing all of those things. Um, but I think for me, the biggest thing was that you've got to be able to listen to your body, uh, listen to what it needs, listen to what you need, and then be able to advocate for yourself. Nobody is gonna do it for you. Nobody is gonna be able to set the appointment to get the medication. Nobody's going to be able to set the appointment to get off the medication, but you. And so this ability to advocate for myself and educate myself and know what I need and why I need it has been super empowering, I guess. Um, it doesn't make things any less scary or any less difficult, but um, I just think really advocating for yourself and what you need in the moment and what you need from other people is definitely been the biggest, the biggest learning curve for me. And so I'm just happy to be here.